general for ex exponential functions, and these will still hold true when we talk about our log functions at the intersection as well. So if we have a negative being multiplied to your x inside that exponent position, that's a flip over the y-axis. If you have anything being added or subtracted in, to your x in the exponent position, that's going to be your shift left or right. And again, you solve, you set it equal to 0, you solve it for x. If you get a positive value, you're going to the right. You solve for x, get a negative h, you're shifting to the left. Now, they might combine these two together. So they might put the negative here in front of your x. That's still the flip over the y-axis. And here, you would set this whole thing equal to 0 and solve for x and still come up with the same. But they may factor the negative out. Okay? And that way you get your x minus h and everything still works out the same. You get the flip over the y-axis and you get your shift to the left or right. If we have a negative in front of our base, then that's going to be a flip over the x-axis. And if we have a minus or a plus k again, same as with our parabola, that's going to shift us up or down. So let's take a look at some graphs here. If we had one-third raised to the negative x, I would identify that we're definitely going to have a flip over the y-axis. So I'm going to plot my three basic points we talked about. Negative 1, 1 over a, 0, 1, and 1a. Well, since here is a, we'll be plotting a point at 1 and 1 third, 0, 1, and then 1 over 1 third turns that into negative 1, 3. I put in my horizontal asymptote, and now we flip it over the y-axis. So these points flip over the y. The 0, 1 doesn't change. We flip it and we have our graph. The domain's all real number, range is all positive values. No change there. And the only way you're going to get a change for the range is if we start doing some shifts moving up or down. And as you can see here in B, we have that happening. So here we're going to have a shift to the right 2, and we're going to shift down 1. So grab your three points. Oh wait, this is a base of two. We can plot four points here. Negative one, one over two. Zero, one, one the base two. Then two the base squared four. We'll put in our horizontal asymptote. All right, we'll shift to the right two. So everybody goes to the right two, and then we're going to shift everybody down one, including your horizontal asymptote, and then we'll draw our curve in. So now my domain is still the same, but now my range, because I shifted down, is now an open interval from negative 1 to infinity. Now, with our exponential functions, because these are a one-to-one -one function, which means they pass the vertical line test and they pass the horizontal line test, they have an inverse function. That inverse function is x equals a y, literally taking y equals a to the x and switching the x and the y around. So the problem is, though, if we want to write this as a function, we need to have it solved for y. So we created a new name for a function. It's called a logarithm. And now the logarithm, this expression, represents the exponent that you have to put on a to get to x. So y represents an exponent. So a to the y equals x. That's what we have right here. Now, this is going to be our conversion rule by this definition as well. So what we want to be able to do is go from log form to exponential form, exponential form to log form. So if I had log base 2 of 8 equals 3, the way I would treat to do this is find your base, base 2, the 8 is by the base, the 8 goes to the other side of the equal sign and by itself, and the 3 comes over as now the exponent, 2 to the 3rd equals 8. Don't make a mistake and call it 3 squared. That's 9. That's not an 8. Okay, or 2 to the 8th equals 3. That's not true. It's got to be a true statement. For B, base is 4, x to the other side, 3 comes over as the exponent. 4 to the 3rd equals x. Don't simplify it any further. They just wanted to make the change from log to exponential. C 
3 to the negative 4 equals 1 eighth. The base is 3, so log base 3. Negative 4 goes to by itself on the, e on the other side of the equal sign. 1 over 81 goes inside the log function. So here's the exponential notation being changed into a log. Base 1 half, x to the other side, y you come over as the exponent. So practice that quite a bit. It's definitely going to be on the test, something you need to know. All right, graphing a log function. Now again, because this is an inverse of the exponential function, I'm going to look at graphing log base 2 of x. And you have to, because it's the inverse of the exponential function, you still have to have the same restrictions on your bases. They have to be positive and they can't be equal to 1. So we'll look at bases that are greater than 1 right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go grab that y equals 2 to the x, grab that table, and its inverse is log base 2 of x, which means all you do is switch the x and y coordinates around. And then we can go plot this. Well, everything has to switch. All right, we had a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now it's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And I'll start to plot these points at 0 0.25, negative 2, 0 0.5, negative 1, 1, 0. There's my common point. 0, 1 is now changed to 1, 0. Then we have 2, 1, 4, 2, and then, of course, 8, 3. If you want to plot it out there, there's my curve. Well, x and y's have to change. That means so must our domain and range change. Domain is now all positive numbers, and the range is all real numbers. f of x equals log base a of x. If a is the base is greater than 1, we are still increasing. Not as fast, but we're still increasing. It's still continuous. Now the y-axis becomes the vertical asymptote as x approaches 0 from the right. And notice my three basic points. Notice how I switch the x and y's around. And again, you can throw in that fourth point again if the base is small enough. If we look at a base between 0 and 1, log of base 1 half of x, again, don't recreate the wheel. We used this table earlier, switch them around. 8, negative 3, 4, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 1 half, 1, 1 fourth, 2. There's my vertical asymptote. Now we start plotting our points. There's 0.25, the 2, 0.5, 1, 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 4, negative 2, 8, negative 3. And it appears that this graph has flipped over the x-axis compared to log base 2 of x. So now when we're between 0 and 1, we are decreasing and continuous. Domain and range, no change. Our y-axis is still our vertical asymptote as x approaches 0 from the right, and again, you can see our points are switched. Now, you're going to ask me, wait, how, how, do you get, how do you get your table set up when you were given a log? How did you get those to flip? Well, let me go grab my calculator here. If you have the TI-84CE, the newer ones here, and some of the 84s have them too, I can graph this, so let me go to, I'm going to need that those other things there, hold on. I'm going to turn those off. All right, so if you go to math, scroll up, and look for log base. You can put in any base you want. Okay, 1 divided by 2. And then put in your x, and then we'll go to our table set, or second graph, activate your table, and now you can have your values. And I think I have mine where I'm typing them in. So if I type in the 8, there's the negative 3. I type in the 4, the 2, the 1, and it just switches everything around. 0.5 and the 0.25, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.
And again, if we are attempting to plug in a negative number into our log, you can see we're getting an error message. So that's how you can create that table. Now, if I have the table counting, you can see now it, I change it to auto if it's counting by ones. Now you're going to get some really crazy, ugly, possible decimal answers. You'll just have to scroll through and find the nice points to plot if you want to go further. Then, all right. Okay, let me put that away. We'll come back to that later. Okay, so if I want to graph a log function, log base 2 of x minus 1, this is just going to be a shift to the right one. So, again, using my points, my three special points, or we could go four because this is a two, draw in my vertical asymptote, all right, base two, our first point we can have at one-fourth negative two, one-half negative one, the one-zero, two, one, four, two, and if you want to put in that eight, three, we can do that, just switching those around. But now we're going to shift everybody to the right. So vertical asymptote and the points and the curve all move to the right one. So now my domain has changed. It's now open interval starting with the one. So one to infinity. And my range is still all real numbers. Okay, another example here, part B. <laughs> we have y equals log base 4 of x plus 3 minus 2. Let's determine our transformations x plus 3 on the inside, again, setting it equal to 0, solving for x, x equals negative 3, we're going to go left 3, minus 2 on the outside, we're going down 2. Let's draw in our vertical asymptote. Let's plot our points, again, thinking of those three points, 1 over a comma negative 1, that's 1 fourth negative 1, let's plot that point right there. Your common point, 1, 0. Remember, exponential is 0, 1. Logs will now be 1, 0. And then we have the point 1, comma, the base for exponential. Then it's the base, comma, 1 for log. 4, 1. All right, so what we can do now is we'll shift to the left 3. We're going to have to move our vertical asymptote as well. And then we'll go down 2 and then draw in our curve. And that's the location of our graph. Again, domain will change since we went to the left 3. Our domain is now an open interval, negative 3 to infinity, but our range stays the same as all real numbers.